Hello, good day, or welcome back to NAT. And today we're going to be looking at how to secure our NAT server. So why might you want to do this? Well, let's say you run a number of applications, expose them on the internet. And so your NAT server might be one of those applications. If it's not secure, anyone could discover the port. You can connect to NATs and say, just basically give me, I want to subscribe to all messages. Now, what we're going to be doing is showing how to secure NAT server using simple username and password. So that's very easy to understand. Of course, there are many ways you can um, secure NATs, and I'll show you that in the NATs documentation. So, like I said, um, there are many ways to secure NATs, and if you go to the NATs documentation website, and you click on security, you'll see it all. Um, there are a couple of ways to secure NATs using tokens, using name, password, TLS certificates, other things, um, JWT tokens. But we're going to simply stick with username and password because, like I said, that's pretty straightforward and easy. And you can see for the NAT config file, it's very easy to specify um, username and password. Something a bit strange in the NATS configuration file in the section where you put user authentication information. It puts it under a field called authorization. And the reason that's strange is because authorization usually refers to what the user can do once they're authenticated. And authentication is just like who can is allowed to use the system, now what they can do. So this really, where we see username and password, this really authentication information. NATs allow you to do authorization for a user once they authenticated in the sense that you can say this user can either subscribe to a subject or publish a subject, that sort of thing. But yet this is sort of interesting just wanted to point that out now in terms of the configuration file always formatting it could be json or yaml we'll use json and this doc, this part of the documentation here tells you exactly how to correctly format that file now typically when we start up our nat server we'll see it output like this and that's fine we know that works so i'm not going to do anything but i'm going to specify a configuration file to use. Usually when we start up our NATs, we don't specify a configuration file. As you can see here, my configuration file is empty. There's nothing in it. It's zero bytes. But I can still tell NATs I want to use it. And you can see that NATs tell me how it's using this configuration file. Even though it's empty, it's just as if I didn't start up NATs with any configuration whatsoever. And to prove this, I'll do a NAT reply um, command using the NAT CLI. And you can see that oh, um, once I type this out, and I press enter, well, it's going to connect to our NAT server and it's going to be waiting there for any requests so it, that it can reply to those requests. So clearly, this is a valid configuration because now it is NAT sets ready, but I can still connect to it as before. And now when I do a request to time of day, and I'll just do a count of like three, for example. Now, if we go to our NAT configuration file, as you saw in the documentation, you simply have um, this field called authorization, and within it, we can just simply specify a user and a password. And we'll simply go with a very secure user A and password A. And now we can restart our NAT server with a configuration file. But we have this nice convenient way of just simply saying NAT server that that signal reload, and we can see that how it reloads our configuration file, but because we were connected with the reply that didn't use a um, username and password, it failed. It was giving us that error message. So now we can try to reconnect. And you can see if our password is wrong, we failed. So it is reading the configuration. Once we can connect correctly, try requesting some message. And you can see without username and password, we once again fail. So let's um, specify our user A, password A. And we know that our password B fails because it's wrong password, and you can see we can connect correctly. And that is very easy to do. Now, what if we want to have multiple users? Now, we see a user is simply a JSON object with a user and a value and then a password and a value. So why don't we say we have users, which is just a list of user objects. And so after some reformatting, we can add multiple users by simply duplicating the one that we have 
and changing the username, which is just user field, and then of course the password value. Oh, of course, we can use the same password so long as the username um, is unique within that list. And so now, once again, we'll tell the NAS server to just reload our configuration by sending that signal to reload. And notice now it's saying that, oh, oh I've reloaded with users instead of just a user and a password. And so our reply, our reply did not give an error because we still have that user um, A and B there, which is connected with, so that's fine. And so now we can try connecting, making a request with user B. And so now we can see both of our user accounts are valid because our reply uses user A and our request uses user B. Now, one of the problems with when you create a configuration file like this is if somebody were to look at a configuration file, the password are listed as plain text, meaning that it's just plainly there for anyone to see exactly that it's password A or B. But we can use this NAT command, and you can see there are a bunch of subcommands for this NAT CLI tool command that we've been using. And one of them is server. And if we run that, we can see there are a bunch of things that you can do for the server, like list it, ping it, that sort of thing. But one there is, the one we're interested in is password. And if you don't know what to do, just type question mark for help. And it tells you, enter a password that is a minimum of 22 characters. So instead of guessing, I'm just gonna grab some text from the screen. And I'm gonna estimate that oh, this is about 20 something, but we'll see, we'll count it and see exactly how many characters we grab here on the screen. And so I'm going to grab up to connections. And then I'm going to use the echo command to echo this. But I'm going to pipe the output instead to word count. And so I'll use the minus C option to just tell me how many characters. It says it's 33. So great. We, we do have more than 22. So let's just paste this as our password. It asks us to re-enter it, so we paste it. So now we have the bcrypt password. So this now is what we're going to actually put in our NATS configuration file. As you can see, this is not plain text anymore, but it's a string. Okay, so what I'm going to do instead is create a new user called user C. And I'll give this new user C our bcrypt password. Um, now, all our usernames and passwords should be strings technically. Um, it's just previously worked because NAT can look at it and see it though it's a string. But if we type our bcrypt password as it is, it would be confused. Let's explicitly say that's a string. Okay, so if we now reload our configuration, um, and then we can now connect with user C using this new password, this much more secure password. Now notice, when we type our password on command line, we have to type the password that we want, which is this listening for client connection, that's the string. But the nice thing is because the bcrypt password and configuration file, anyone who got the configuration file wouldn't know that this is our password. And since this password is for user C, we have to change that and notice that it works correctly. So this is all you can put encrypted passwords in the configuration file so it's not plainly readable. Okay, so now that we have seen how to add multiple users, had encrypted password in the configuration file. Let's jump to a programming example so we can quickly see how you can use user authentication in your connection string when you are connecting to NAS from your application. And of course, we're doing Go. So I'm not going to show you how we create a mod, mod file, you know, Go module, or write most of the main program because this is stuff we've already done and we've done many times. So I'm simply going to start with a main that go, and I've already created a username, a password, and the host port, which is the host name and call on the port number. So this is pretty straightforward. Now, I, the username you see here, I've already decrypted, put it in my configuration file, reloaded my NAS server. So just now, let's, let's now focus on exactly what we need to do. We need to have a URL. So we're going to construct our URL using the username, the password, and the host port. And so the way to do this is you have to type NATS colon forward slash forward slash. So that's the protocol. Then you type host name and port. Now this if you have no security. But if you have security, then you want to have the username colon password at and then the host and port. Now since we this looks very familiar to HTTP 
basic password like I mentioned before. But of course here the protocol is NAT and NAT HTTP or HTTPS. So here we can substitute these hard-coded values, username and password, or the host board for string var for variables. And that's exactly what we're going to use. Um, that's exactly what we're going to do here. Um, by specifying the variables, we can write or update our program to take these as parameters if we want or read them from the environment or anything like that. Now we're going to use the NAT connect command and we're going to give it our URL that we've constructed. And that's all there is to that. The connect function returns a connection and an error. So we're going to check and make sure that we are connected to NAS before we try and do anything. And of course, if we can't connect, we'll just do something that's fatal because there's no point in going forward so we can exit the program. If we are connected, we'll defor closing our NAS connection. And so that's where we use defor and see that close. Now, this is all basic stuff. And the only new thing here is adding the username and password. So the next thing then is to make a request because we have a reply pending, right? So we can see that our request, we need to send that to, of course, our subject. We can optionally send some data along with our request and, of course, a timeout. So copy the subject we want to send to and we'll just paste that in. And we're not going to send any data in our request because it's not being used anyway. And so for the timeout, we'll just say one second. Now, because we have a reply just waiting there, we, I don't expect it to take a second, but we'll just put something in it. We could have put milliseconds if we wanted, but why not? And the reply, the return value from our request is the message and an error. So of course, we'll check and make sure uh, we don't get an error. Now, if we don't get an error, we want to process the message. Think of it as process the message. So if error is equals to nil, we'll just print out the message because we know that though we got back a message. Now, if our error is not nil, then we're not going to print out anything. And because we have no other recourse, if we have an error when we try to do a request, we'll just not try to do anything else other than just simply um, discard the error, essentially. All we want to make sure is that we only try to print out a message if we don't get an error. And we'll do this for 10 message, 10 requests. So we'll do for i colon equals zero, but of course I made a mistake there. So that needs to be um, i instead of one. So let's change that to i for i colon equals zero. And because I want to do this too fast, let's delay or sleep one second between each request to NAS, regardless of whether it's failed or not. And that's it, that's our entire program. And now if we go back to the command line and we just run our program, of course, there's the main that go in this directory. You can see that we are making those requests to, um, to NATS and we get in the response and that's the time. And so that's it. Um, I hope you found this useful. I uh, just wanted to show just how simple it is to secure your NATS and use the username and password. Of course, like I said, there are many other ways that you can look into if username and password doesn't work for you or is not the thing that you want to do like you could use we reached the end of this video and i appreciate it and hopefully you learned something if you have an issue please post and um take care if you're not a subscriber please consider subscribing i would love to have you as a subscriber if you are a subscriber thanks and appreciate your patience see you in the next video be safe bye